I don't know how to begin this story. The memory of this incident still haunts me, and I can't tell this without having tears in my eyes. My name's Claire, and I'm a country girl. Singing is my passion, and this passion takes me to places. The night this horrifying incident occurred in my life, I was returning home from a girl's night out in Nashville, Tennessee. I wasn't alone as I had my friend Linda to accompany me. We hired a cab using the popular app Lyft. After waiting for five minutes at the pickup location, the cab arrived. He was a tall, built, muscular guy. The app flashed his name as Albert. We got inside the cab and he started the trip. My friend Linda has the first drop off as she lived close by. We started chatting when Linda said in a whispering voice, What do you think those are, Claire? She pointed under the front seat and I noticed a bottle of Jägermeister peeking from underneath, but there's no crime in keeping a bottle of alcohol under the seat of the car. Also, there was no smell of alcohol in the driver. We were sure that even though he has alcohol with him, he hasn't drunk it on duty. Maybe he's planning to drink it when he gets home. Yeah, everyone enjoys being tipsy, I guess. <laughs> Stop it. I kept looking at the rearview mirror to see if the driver was being suspicious or staring at us, but he wasn't. His entire attention was on the road. He neither spoke nor flinched. He looked so calm that at one point I thought he wasn't even breathing. Linda and I kept chatting and cracking inside jokes. After 15 minutes, her stop arrived and the driver spoke for the first time. First destination reached. He talked like a machine and pulled over the car at the sidewalk for Linda to get off. Even though the driver drove safely the entire way, I don't know why Linda just couldn't trust him. Before getting off, she said, Um, why don't you stay the night at my place? You can leave tomorrow morning. Well, as tempting as it sounds, I gotta get home to my dog. The poor animal is probably hungry. Are you sure, Claire? Yeah, go get some sleep. I'll call you once I get home. Okay then, take care of yourself, okay? Good night, Linda. Good night, Claire. We waved at each other as the car began to leave. I turned on the Google map to see the way ahead and I realized that there was huge traffic waiting for me on the highway. I wanted to get home early as I was too tired, so I surfed the navigation screen and found another route. The route had a couple of extra kilometers to cover, but considering the amount of time I would get stuck in traffic, it seemed like a better option. Can you take the road to the outskirts to avoid the traffic? I asked Albert. For the first time, he looked at me and our eyes met. Immediately, a cold shiver ran down my spine. His eyes were so big that I could feel his stare piercing my soul. He replied in that same robotic voice, but I don't know the route well. Also, my phone battery has died. Um, no issues. I can guide you. It'll be easier and faster than the highway. Fine. The way he said fine sounded like I had somehow pissed him off, but I remained quiet and kept an eye on the navigation. We got onto a stranded road surrounded by deep woods. I rolled down the car window when the man unexpectedly yelled at me. Can you be nice to my car? What? I'm just rolling down the windows. I saw you putting pressure on the handle. If you damage my car, you will have to pay for it. Remember that. I'm not experiencing a car ride for the first time, mister. Jerk. Even though I said the last word in a very low voice, I saw him giving me a death stare from the rearview mirror. I was honestly confused to see his demeanor change like that. I just wanted to get out of the car as soon as possible. After driving for 10 minutes straight in dead silence, I noticed we had to take a left turn. You need to take the next left. The man didn't reply to me. Instead, increased the speed while breathing in anger. He was panting like an animal and making a growling noise while driving at full speed. <sighs> Excuse me? What, what are you doing? Trying to get you out of the car. At least he's driving faster so the trip ends sooner. But surprisingly, when the left turn came, he missed it and took the right turn instead. The car went to a completely different road and I felt my stomach drop. Hey, where are you going? I told you to take a left turn. Ah, enough of your ranting, stupid blonde. 
Saying this, he stopped the car and got down from it. I was horrified because I knew something very bad was coming my way. He grabbed the back door and opened it in one go. He then screamed at me. Get out, you witch! Get out of my car! Right now! What? W what are you saying? Drive me to my destination or else I'm gonna report you! I'm not frickin' driving you anymore! Get out! Please, just listen to me. But he didn't wait for me to finish. He grabbed me by the hair and pulled me out of his car in full force. He was so strong that I could feel his Hulk hand tearing chunks of hair from my skull. I screamed and cried in pain. Please stop! Ah! He threw me into a nearby ditch and I face planted on the hard concrete. But his abuse didn't just stop right there. He laughed like a demon, seeing me writhing in pain. <laughs> This is what you deserve for being a pain in the ass, witch! And just before turning away, he kicked me in the stomach. In my blurry vision, I saw this monster driving away in his car. Thankfully, I grabbed my phone when he pulled me out of his car. With trembling hands, I dialed 911 and called for help. I was in such acute physical pain until help arrived. I kept lying in that dirty ditch, waiting for the cops to rescue me. Authorities issued a warrant for the Lyft driver, Albert, the next day. I provided the cops with a photo of Albert from the Lyft app. He was arrested within 48 hours and later booked at Davidson County Jail. Though he was released on a $1,000 bail, I strictly made sure that Lyft eradicated him from the driver's list so he couldn't harm any other passenger the way he harmed me. It's been almost a year since I left my job as a Lyft driver. The reason behind it is one of the most bizarre incidents I've ever come across in my life. So this is how the story goes. I was heading to a pickup one Tuesday afternoon. It was the second ride of the day, and a man named George had booked it. The drop location was to a hospital, so I guessed it was a medical emergency. I reached the pickup spot as soon as possible. An older woman was seen standing on the sidewalk with a middle-aged man who identified to be George. The moment they saw my car approaching, this man started waving at me, spreading his arms wide in the air. His body language hinted that he was desperate for me to stop which I was going to anyway. I stopped the car in front of them and said, please get in. The man and the older woman immediately jumped in the back of the car. Take us to the hospital. Yes, ma'am. I started the ride and the man laid down in the older woman's lap and started to moan in pain. Uh, uh, um, ma'am, is everything all right? Just drive. The woman replied to me rudely and I didn't talk any further. Though the man, George, had no physical injury on the outside, I could understand that he was going through some pain on the inside. I wanted to help the poor guy, so I drove as fast as I could. Suddenly, they struck up a conversation that began to creep me out. Mom, do you still love me? Of course I do, Pumpkin. I told you she can't love you more than Mommy. I know, but she was so beautiful. I just couldn't resist myself. Shut up. She used her body to take you away from me. That mean, selfish witch. I'm sorry. Please don't be mad at me for sleeping with her. You made the wrong decision, son. And now look at what it cost you. That's why a good son shouldn't love any other woman than his mommy. I want to be your good son again. I will be. I promise. I want to believe you, but first, we need to get you to the doctor. The woman has done something to you when you were sleeping beside her. That's why you're having this pain now. I don't want to die. You won't die. Mommy will take care of you in the most way possible, okay? Saying this, the woman kissed George on the forehead like he was a nine-year-old kid. I felt pretty weird by the entire scene. We got onto the busy highway. 
It was during that time of day when the traffic was at its worst, so having no other option, I waited in line just like every other car at that point. Suddenly, the man sat up and started screaming profanities at me. Can you drive any slower, moron? Excuse me? Yeah, I'm talking to you, you stupid jerk. I need to get to the hospital right now. Look, uh, I understand you have an emergency, but there's nothing I can do. You're the one driving this effing car. Speed up, jackass. Hey, you need to check your language. Don't talk to my son like that, you penniless freak. No doubt you were working like a slave. Well, at least I'm earning my bread. Your big dun sum is crying on your lap. If anyone here is a freak, it's the two of you. What did you call my mother? Freak! Exactly what you heard. If you don't behave, I'll throw you out of my car right now! As soon as I said this, the man grabbed me by the neck from the back seat and punched me in the head. Ah! I will beat the hell out of you, you jerk! He went on punching and choking me while I was in the car. It was a huge chaos, shocking that his mom didn't even flinch while witnessing his rage. Rather, she laughed and said, <laughs> That's my son. Teach this man a lesson. Beat him. Beat him. <laughs> I tried my best to free myself from George's grasp, but when I couldn't, I pressed the brakes hard and the car stopped, creating a loud screeching noise. I took my hands off the steering wheel and hit the psycho in his eye with my elbow. He screamed and let me go. Ah! He hit me! He hit me, Mom! I then got out of the car, opened the backseat door, and grabbed this dude by his collar. I screamed in his face. I have tolerated enough. I will make sure you visit the police station first before visiting the hospital. All the people on the road gathered to see our fight, and two policemen came to separate us. Once they did, they took us to the police station. Thankfully, I had the dash cam footage of what the man did and said, which I immediately provided to the cops on behalf of my evidence. The cops realized it wasn't my fault at all. They made George pay me for an assault and battery, and then took us to the nearby hospital, where both of us received medical help. I was sitting on the bed holding an ice pack to the back of my head when I heard George and his mother one more time. I came out of the hospital cabin and saw the psycho mother and son duo surprisingly fighting with each other standing in the lobby. But, but you said you would take care of me. What are you saying? I'm just an old woman. I can barely take care of myself. Go back to your stupid girlfriend with your infected body. She's the one who gave you this disease. There's nothing I can do. What? Mommy, why are you behaving like this? Look, George. I can't ruin my life for you. I've been your mother for the last 30 years. Now leave me alone, okay? What happened to you? Don't you remember? I'm your good son, Mommy. Oh my God. Someone get this freak off my back. You are not my kid anymore. You are a grown man. Learn to be on your own. Saying this, the woman started to walk out of the hospital, and George went to follow her but the two cops standing at the gate stopped him and put handcuffs on him. One of them said, I think the asylum will be best for you, lad. No! She's lying. She's a witch. She ruined my life and she left me because of this disease. I hate you. I hate you, you witch! The cops started taking him away, and his angry cussing slowly changed into a pitiful sobbing. Mommy! Please come back. They're taking me away. I don't want to go with them, please. I came to know that George was diagnosed with AIDS after being inspected by a doctor at the hospital. His cruel, selfish, equally sick mother left him knowing about the disease. Suddenly, she didn't want him anymore because he got infected. It makes me nauseous whenever I recall that day in my memory. I don't know where George or his mother is now, but I just hope I never meet them again. Uh, drive 
Master, please, man. Excuse me, man. If you're going to be disrespectful, I'll just pull over right now.